100 dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 19 in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role playing. And we are in the process, in our previous video, we started working on this user can reset password. Uh, we're testing device with our, um, our application. The user has the ability to sign up for an account, log in, log out. Uh, we're now testing reset passwords. So we've gone through, this is a, um, probably you can see in our issue here, um, we're gone into, um, what, eight out of 16 tasks that we've got completed here. And the tasks have grown a bit over time, but um, we're just kind of going through making sure that everything works with Devise, with Rails 7 and Turbo. Uh, we've gone through and done things like making Devise work with Turbo, which it doesn't out of the um, out of the box uh, with its current configuration, things like flash messages um, and um, unsuccessful responses, all those sorts of things um, are different in kind of breaking uh, change compared to what Devise does with Rails um, that doesn't use Turbo, kind of the old uh, unobtrusive JavaScript and Turbo Links version of Rails. So because of that, we are doing a lot of um, browser system testing here to make sure that everything works with the browser with JavaScript incorporated and all that stuff. So, um, and in our previous video, we got the happy path working of this. The user can reset um, a password with a valid email um, and token. And um, there was a lot of uh, iteration and troubleshooting on this. Uh, in particular, the, the reset password token uh, was a bit difficult to find because when we did the um, the user sign up test, it was directly the um, the user's uh, confirmation token. Uh, with the case of the reset password token, it's actually hashed and encrypted um, in the user record, so we can't just take the um, the value that is on the user record. We tried doing like a user the user reload and then kind of using that reset password token and it wasn't working. So we had to go through and find the last email delivery and then parse the, um, the value out of the body there using, um, the regular expression. Um, and that has got us to a working state. We still have some, um, and this is the wrong, uh, comment here. This is for the other, um, test. Um, so I'll, I'll fix that when I start implementing some of these other things. So, but hopefully um, we're going to get the unhappy paths of this working and then do a little bit of refactoring and maybe a, a little bit of assertion regarding this uh, this email that we're doing there to, to make sure that it works. And we might apply that back to the, the sign up test depending on or add an item to our backlog to do that so that we don't get out of um, sync with each other but or just do too many things try to do too many things in one video i'm trying to cut down on that so we're going to now start dealing with the unhappy path tests that we've got here so user cannot reset password unless the email matches a user so we'll put in a bad email that isn't in our fixtures um and uh sorry that the errors happen there um and then that the user can't re reset the password with an invalid token. We've actually done this because the um, the token that we were using from, like if we just did this with user dot reset password token, it's gonna wind up giving us that invalid token error. So um, that that's something that we've um, inadvertently tested with the other test there by failing it. Um, the password errors out if the par new passwords don't match, and then um, errors out if the password is too short. So that's what we're gonna go with. I'm going to start with the um, user can't res reset password unless the email matches the user. I've got a few 
utility methods that I've got that are kind of to try to handle some of these things that occur more than once. So uh, standard reset password preconditions, we're going to run through these and all of the, the different tests that we're doing here. And then um, the uh, change password page assertion. So once we get to that page, we'll, um, we'll call that rather than doing all these things about it. So we'll, um, I will pause and we will implement this first method here. All right, so this uh, test method is fairly short uh, because of that shared standard reset password preconditions section. And then we're going to, after that's done, fill in email with bad email at example.com, which is not one of our uh, fixtures. And then click on send me reset password, reset password example instructions. And then the uh, text should be email not found like this. So send password instructions. Um, and then we've got the, the error there, not email not found. So we'll take that, we'll run it. Uh, yep, yeah, that looks correct. So now we've got four skips. Did I not take out the skip? Did I not save the file? All right, down to three skips and that test passed. Uh, let me take out the puts statement here. I'm confident that that's passing now, so I don't, we don't need to throw that in the, um, in the console. And we'll go in and implement the next test. All right, so I've got the invalid token uh, test here. You can see it's largely copied and pasted from the um, the first happy path test, except for that in the we're not getting the token from the email, and uh, we are. Um, kind of intentionally putting bad token there. Uh, so portions of this uh, will hopefully refactor at the end to get rid of that repeated code. And then um, we're filling in everything correctly on the form, except for the fact that we visited the, the URL with a bad token. Uh, we click on change my password, and then we should assert the text reset password token is invalid, just like we had in our previous test failure here. So you can see this is what we were failing in our previous video. Um, reset password token is invalid. That's what we should get here. So we'll rerun the tests. And that passed. I'll implement the next method. All right, so I've got the um, passwords don't match um, test written here. We'll try running that. So we get here and we're just filling in the confirm with a different one and then um, the text would be confirmation doesn't match password. So password confirmation doesn't match password. Got a failure here on line 59. No, didn't do the preconditions. Try it again. Now we're passing. And we'll now 
implement the uh, situation with password too short. So pause and do that. All right, so we've got the reset password errors out if password is too short. I think this will put us back to no skips. does we'll go back and run the whole suite Right, so our system tests and our non-system tests are now passing. Uh, now I'm gonna go through and try to, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is see if I can add a, I'll, I think I'll refactor it before I add in something about the email delivery assertion. So we're gonna take um, kind of all these repeated sections of code that occur on every test and refactor those out into uh, helper methods. So I'll pause and do that and then talk through it. All right, so I've got some stuff refactored here. So um, I started by kind of condensing these things down and uh, let's take a look at the happy path about to hit submit. So um, standard password preconditions we already had and then I added in a good email flow, which was the repeated code for um, filling in the email, send, click on the send me password instructions, um, assert about the flash, reload the user, assert the t user's token is not nil. Um, so that is um, on all of these. And then we've got a good token flow. So this takes uh, that what we were doing with the token. Um, and here I actually anticipated that we'll wind up using this for the, um, the any rework on the signup page as well. So um, I created a helper method on application system test case, um, which might actually be, that could just be in test helper. I'm gonna move that. into test helper, which application systems test case. Inherits from. So this will essentially, what we had before was the, um, uh, we put the actual string here instead of interpolating it. So this was the, um, and we can see when we're calling it, uh, the reset password token we had in the regular expression itself. Now we're sending the email and the token key as arguments here, and it's gonna take uh, the email's body and match the token key um, to string split on the equals sign and give us the second element in the array. So um, we're just kind of refactoring that out into a method in our test helper so that other tests that let's say we're trying to do email tests or other things, um, can use that same pattern to um, get a token key. So we are, that was the next item in our, let's make sure we're on the right item here. Good token flow. And then um, we're visiting that edit password URL with the token in that good token flow, which takes place every time except for our um, invalid token. So here we do the password preconditions, the good email flow, and then we visit it with the bad token instead of the good token. Uh, then in our happy path method, uh, change password page assertions, which we had in each test before. I just put it there. 
And then uh, I also added this standard password reset fill in. Um, you can see that one's not a bang method. We're just going in, filling in um, new password and confirm new password with the new password. Uh, this is similar to what we did in our user sign up test where we had kind of that um, standard sign up fill in where we'd um, fill in those fields and then if we had to make any changes, um, which we actually don't need to, well, I guess it, and it's uh, going to, to do that on all of our kind of pages when we're right about to hit submit. So um, for the, uh, the happy path test, it gets there and then we click on change my password and it works. And then uh, email doesn't match. So this gets us to the preconditions um, and then we're at a bad email. And uh, so that one didn't actually require any refactoring at all. The invalid token, uh, we get up to good email and then um, visit the page with a bad token. Uh, we still get to do the page assertions and standard reset fill in. Um, and then uh, the, we get the error that the token is invalid. And then on the last two, we get the happy path about to hit submit and then we fill it in wrong um, with a missing confirmation or in this case missing um, or too short of a password. So let's run those and see if I was able to refactor without breaking the world. Promising. All right, an unanticipated, surprising, good result after refactoring. So now we're going to um, see how angry Rubocop is at us. Only two offenses and they're both Auto correctable. That's better than I thought as well. All right. So Rubicop is now happy. And the next thing I'm going to do, I think, in this um, good email flow. I'm going to I'm going to add a uh, an assertion about the um, the email being delivered here. Um, so I'll pause and implement that and then we'll we'll talk through it. All right. So this is a pretty simple thing. I could have just done it while we were uh, without pausing. So uh, in the email good flow assert emails one um, just put it in a do end block and then the same thing when we have the click on reset password instructions so we will rerun our tests here and assuming that this goes uh, well, well we'll make the changes to uh, make assertions about emails in the um, the user sign up test as well. Oh, five errors. So I might need to include the helper. See if that will solve it in our case here. I'll just run it on the uh, on the 
reset password test page. All right, one email expected, but zero were sent. So we had four out of five test runs. Oh, because is not the correct method. I will undo that and see um, about fixing that. All right, so I'm a little confused here. So this is the, uh, the Ruby on Rails guides here, guides.rubyonrails.org. This is related to email testing and the section on functional and system testing, um, require test helper, um, users test. I mean, we're, our application system test case here, um, Uh, inherits from action dispatch system test case, which the um, the documentation says should work. Um, and then this assert emails here should work according to the just make sure I spelled it right or something. Assert emails. This is happening at the right time. I need to rerun it. Undefined method assert emails, which is strange. So this might be a, a documentation bug, like the, um, it says that you can do this, but um, the, um, the method isn't available here. Got a test. And then if we were to include the specific module, maybe let's see here. This is, this is an old version of the API. Let's, okay, action mailer, test helper, assert emails, and assert no emails. Try including it again. Make sure we're including the right module here. Is 
that doesn't work, I can try assert uh, in queued emails and see if that does anything. Uh, we're going to want this in application system test case itself. I don't know why it's not there. Maybe if you're not dealing with email at all in your items, let's try it now. All right, let's try changing that to assert in queued emails and see if that solves anything. Zero were in queued. Let me try. doing it. We're in a different place here. I'm not calling that in the one that has the bad token, so we should. Huh. That is odd. And then when do we call good email flow? Maybe it's just needing to get that reload in in order for it to register. Yeah, I might submit a, a documentation pull request um, on the Rails guides for that because it is not working according to how the testing guide tells us there that um, it's not including this assert emails in there. But that seems to have solved it. So let's see if we can make the same changes to the places where it makes sense in the user sign up test. Alright. So our happy path unconfirmed that should give us an email here actually we can put that right in happy path unconfirmed We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll put it around the 
method that we're calling instead. That's just my one file. User sign up test. So we had two failures. Invalid confirmation token. Signing up and confirming a new user. So we'll just see if we can do what we did before here and put it around the happy path unconfirmed. It's probably going to make Rubocop angry. because we were pretty close to our limit in terms of lines here, but we'll see what happens. And then where else are we calling this? It. So let's see if that gets us back to passing and keeps us from the wrath of Rubocop. Oh, we still. Okay. Scope. Line 25. So user, we'll just, that might make Rubocop angry. No, no offenses. All right, so that is now working. Let's run our full suite again. I'm gonna try one more thing before this. So I put that uh, RuboCop uh, disable and RuboCop enable in those helper methods. I wonder if I make them private methods, if that will solve the issue there. I'm going to try it in the reset password test here. So I'm going to This should make Rubocop angry. Let's see. It'll get angry about the um, the indentation if we do this, but let's see if it's.
you know, so that resolves that making them private methods. So let's do that, fix the indentation. So do the same thing. Let me just search for RuboCop. places in that user sign up test. So I can do the same thing here. is okay. <laughs> you've got to be kidding me now we're at too many lines because of making it a private method okay let's see where I guess I can try seeing if I just do this in the whole scope of the happy path. Unconfirmed. See if that will still pass. See how that goes. All right, that seemed to work, except for confirmation token. It's in line 23. Right, let's try that again. the user at the end of that. All right. See if I can just move that out of the block. Assertions about the unconfirmed user user. All right. 
one more time here. I hope. Start time needs to be outside of the block scope. One, one more time. Rubocop, Bubby. Too many lines. All right, run all the tests. sure that nothing's broken and then we can look at that RuboCop issue path unconfirmed I'm just going to disable for that one. I don't think there's a better way to break that down than exists. All right, Rubocop is happy. Our tests are happy. Take a look at our Git status. Diff. Okay, added the item there. Most of those are indentation related and adding in the email there. Um, in our test helper, we added that method. Let me take a look before I commit here at um, 
commenting the um, the code um, in a few places, and then we should be ready to commit this. All right, so I have added some comments here to the um, the reset password test. I added some stuff here. Uh, the tell helper method there, I added some pretty extensive usage um, comments because that one's not uh, necessarily as um, intuitive um, as some of the other methods there. And then back to this user sign up test where we disabled the uh, items there where it says sign up flow here that is used over and over again so I think we do have a chance to get that under um, should be it's going to be a bang because it's got stuff there and then everywhere where we're doing that comment anymore. So that, let's see if I can get rid of the disables enables. All right, RuboCop's happy. Make sure I didn't break my tests. Right. So now we can do our git add and git commit here. I'll pause and write my commit message. All right, I've got my commit message here. Save it, make sure all of our files are closed and saved. They all are. Push to our remote. And then while while we're doing that, I will assume success 
on our build. Oops. bed build still running I'll confirm it finishes all right our build is green let's just go and make sure commit is green on the branch all the checks succeeded And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.